Today I'm going to share all the knowledge that you need to create these amazing looking horizontal sunset designs which are ideal for lots of different evergreen niches and have gotten me many sales over the years. So the first thing I usually like to do with my artboards if I'm designing for a dark t-shirt is actually change the background color to black and a quick way to do that is heading to file document setup then ticking this box right here simulate colored paper and you can then change the background color of your artboard with this specific box right here so select black and then hit OK and the first horizontal sunset I'm going to show you is the easier one of the two but it's still very effective and can get you sales with lots of evergreen niches so the first step is just selecting the rectangle tool right here where you can also hit the letter M on your keyboard to select that we want to just select a white fill in this case and no stroke color and all you have to do is just draw out a rectangle that is quite a bit wider than it is tall kind of like this and then move on to the ellipse tool you can also hit L on your keyboard for that and we want to actually draw a circle that originates or which has its center on the top right corner anchor point right here and first of all the rectangle is still selected and you can deselect things by holding down control and then clicking anywhere on your artboard that's a quick shortcut that can be really handy and now we can actually click on this anchor point then hold down alt so it keeps staying to that anchor point, the center of the circle. And if you then hold down shift, the circle will also stay in perfect proportions. Draw this out until you hit the bottom of the rectangle, like so. And you will see these uh, guidelines come up as well, forming a cross. If you don't see those guides, then you will have to enable them right here where it says view, you have to then enable smart guides to get a lot of help with this tutorial. If you have them turned off, you're going to have a hard life in Illustrator. So um, now that we've got that done, you might want to adjust your rectangle a little bit. Um, sometimes it helps having that a bit wider. But essentially, now we've got the base for our design. You can unite these two shapes with a pathfinder window with the first function right here, unite. And now we're ready to actually erase something out of this um, to create that stripey effect that all of these sunsets have. So select the rectangle tool again, change the fill color to black and start drawing some very thin lines right here or just start drawing out a first line that's quite wide and quite thin and narrow as well then you want to go ahead and duplicate that so click on the line hold down alt on your keyboard and shift as well to keep it in line with the other one once you've let go of that just click Control d on your keyboard repeatedly to duplicate that same exact process and you might have to do some realigning because um, it does look best if you've got one of your black lines lined up with this edge right here like at the moment that definitely looks very funky with that thin bit of white so let's just draw this up a little bit like so and now you might notice that you have a bit of an imbalance like here at the top and um, we've gone quite thin whereas at the bottom we're a bit wider so I think I'm going to delete this one line and then I will just sort of skew this a little bit, draw this out by selecting all of these black lines, dragging them at the top to expand, but also holding down Alt at the same time. That way they expand to the top and bottom at the same time. And if we drop it right here, that does look perfect now. Right, last step that's left is actually erasing these because at the moment they're still black lines. So head over to the Pathfinder window and click minus front. Next up, we want to apply some color to this sunset. And besides having individual colors per line, you can also use a gradient, which can look really nice. If you find a good gradient, you can just Google nice retro gradient or something like that and use that as inspiration. And uh, one quick tip here is once you've found a gradient, first of all, you've got this window over here, the gradient window, which if you don't see it, head over to window and click gradient right here this way you can customize it further and um, you can add some more colors into this uh, more swatches you can also change the angle if you wanted to that looks really horrible but I'll show you how to fix it and you've got some other options like radial gradient as well if you get this sort of funky effect it's because the gradient is being applied to each shape individually rather than the entire shape at once and a quick way to fix that is just clicking G whilst you actually have your shape selected because that will open up the gradient tool over here. And now you can drag, like click and drag the actual gradient and apply it however you want. And this is really handy because you can get the exact effect 
very easily and this can definitely look really really nice now that we've got our color scheme ready um, I also wanted to show you how to actually add some graphics onto this to obviously make it suit whatever niche you're entering and I've got a few palm tree graphics right here that I found on creative fabrica I will leave a link to the palm bundle down below if you want to use the same ones but yeah essentially there's a few ways to apply these one quite effective way is copying the silhouette that you want to have pasted onto here so select the object hit control C then click into your sunset and open up the transparency window now you can make a mask right here and literally just paste your palm trees into the mask with control V and if we now click on clip right here as you can see you can move the silhouette around and align it to wherever you want within your sunset which is really handy because now if you click back from the mask itself onto the sunset we can move this off the artboard as you can see it's being erased and you can still adjust this afterwards by once again clicking from sunset to transparency mask right here and then moving the object around within the mask and you can paste multiple objects into this layer mask which is really really cool and makes it easy to customize so um, once you're done just always remember to click back onto your actual design layer right here or the design thumbnail so you can uh, move those objects around without problem. So now that we've got the first design done, how do you actually create those spiral looking sunsets that are horizontal because they're not that straightforward. But once you know how to do it, it is not too difficult. So we want to start off with the rectangle tool again. Make sure to select a white fill color and no stroke once again. This time we're going to draw out a very, very thin long line kind of like this and then we want to duplicate this down by clicking dragging and holding down alt and shift at the same time make sure the gap in between the lines is relatively small so kind of make it look like this and then hit ctrl d to repeat that process um, let's go with five lines in this case that works quite well and i need to size these down a little bit now that is the first step now we need to add the sort of radial end right here on the right hand side and that is done with the ellipse tool surprise surprise <laughs> we're creating a radial shape with the ellipse tool but uh, jokes aside it's actually easiest to do this in the outline mode which you can enter by clicking ctrl y on your keyboard and that way you see the outlines of all of your shapes and what you want to do is you want to start your circles out in the top right corner once again over here in the first or top rectangle so click onto this anchor point and hold down alt and shift once again and draw out your first circle make sure it meets the very bottom end the very bottom anchor point right here for the bottom rectangle in this case we want to repeat this process to essentially hit all of the anchor points for all of these edges right here so you have to do it a few times you want to do this one next then click out of it again by holding control and just clicking clicking into the empty space that is going to deselect your original circle and then you can start again click on the top anchor point hold alt and shift match it to that next one down here once again control click to deselect and repeat so do that until you're done and then we'll be ready to create a final shape with the shape builder so there we go that looks nice and geometric and you can kind of see where we're heading with it but if we hit ctrl y now we've still got a very wonky looking <laughs> design this far so let's actually draw these out a bit to the end i do like them to be a bit uh, broader next up select all of our shapes together and then use the shape builder tool you can also hit shift m on your keyboard to access that now you want to just copy me by starting off with the bottom bar right here and just clicking and dragging sort of drawing a line over the bar itself the long rectangle and over the circle that we just added on the right hand side you only have to go this far and then you can let go and do that for the next line so start drawing from the rectangle and go all the way to the right until the entire circle is highlighted once again repeat that process for all of the other ones like so and there we go so now we've got the right shapes combined and we only have to get rid of what's left what we don't want and a quick way to do that is select your rectangle shapes on the left hand side draw a box around them hit ctrl 2 
because that's going to lock them in place so you can't select them anymore and now we can select the remaining shapes by drawing a box around them and just hitting delete on a keyboard and as you can see that looks really really nice and now I did forget adding a line right here to separate these pads you don't have to do that but just to show you the proper way um, you can you can draw out another box sort of in the size of these gaps let's change it to black so you see what I mean uh, move that box up right here like so and that way we've got an even gap up here as well we just need to erase it um, everything else is still locked so to unlock everything you can hit Control alt 2 that is quite a lot to do um, if you can't find it or if you can't seem to do it with your keyboard you can also head up to object and you'll find unlock all right here alt Control 2 so now selecting everything and using the shape builder tool again you can erase this black bar right here while holding down alt we can erase shapes so draw over these while holding down alt to erase that black bar and now we've got this horizontal sunset perfectly ready it's a bit harder to get the initial shape but once you've created it once you can reuse it many many times what i sometimes like to do as well is just round out these edges as well that can look quite nice obviously that's not a necessity as you can see it looks kind of like this so let's go ahead and color this in with a nice retro color scheme. So here we go, a nice color scheme has been applied. You can copy this one as well. It's a very popular one on Merge by Amazon. Just take a screenshot and then use the eyedropper tool to apply to your design. And another few tips that I wanted to show you right here at the end of this tutorial. If your gaps have turned out too big and you think your design looks a bit ugly or not the same, um, a quick tip to adjust the gaps very quickly is selecting your entire shape, then heading over to Object, Path, offset path and then you can play around with this window right here to change the offset pixel amount so if you turn this down a bit as you can see right here um, now we've got a smaller gap or if your gap is too small you can also go minus and create some new shapes that are smaller than the original ones in this case let's say we want to go for five pixels for example now we've got a way smaller gap and if you wanted to you could get rid of the original shapes if they are in the way for you so just select them with the direct selection tool over here and then hit delete on your keyboard another thing you probably want to know is how to apply a texture effect to this now it kind of works the same way uh, than the uh, silhouette beforehand with the transparency panel so um, you can make a mask check the clip option right here and we missed out on one of these so let's hit ctrl g to group everything then create the mask, untick the clip box right here, actually click into the opacity mask layer right here. And now we can go to file, place and open up a texture file from a computer. So here we go. I'm going to use texture number two from my t-shirt design textures bundle, which is also linked in the description. So once you've found your texture, you don't have to use mine. Um, you can use whatever we want. Can be a PNG file, SVG files work as well. I'm um, selected, hit place, and then it's going to load for a little while. Usually you get this little symbol and you want to draw out a big box to place the texture into your design. You can sort of drag it around to adjust the placement, increase the size. Ideally, you don't want to stretch it out too much, um, but but yeah, let's say we want to place it like this. And then remember, click back onto your original design layer right here out of the opacity mask. Otherwise you can't move anything around besides the mask. But yeah, there we go. Nice texture effect applied. I've created two of these sunsets very quickly. And the best thing is we can always reuse them in future. Quickly and easily swap out the silhouettes for different niches and obviously change the color scheme as well if you so wish. If you want to learn how to create another best selling t-shirt design style, make sure to check out this tutorial next where I walk you through the groovy text effect in Adobe Illustrator.